Hi, it's Lou from Christian Faith and Fiction. I have four book reviews to share with you today. They are Christian fiction, two contemporary romance, two historical fiction. Uh, so if you've read any of these books, let me know what your thoughts were in the comments and also let me know what your favourite book is that you've read recently. Okay, let's see how I got on. I've finished reading Positively Penelope by Peppa Basham. This is the second book in the Skimar series. I think that's the name of the series. Um, the first one is Authentically Easy and the third one is Loyally Luke. So this one, they have fantastic covers. I really love the colours and so upbeat. Um, this one is following the cousin Penelope who is really into musical theatre. She loves Julie Andrews and Audrey Hepburn, I think, um, but particularly Julie Andrews. And she's s sort of a very bright, upbeat, sunshiny, um, singing, singing and dancing, all kind of theatre loving person. She is fairly young, early 20s, and she has taken on an internship on this island, which is, i guessing, some a kind of imaginary island somewhere off the Scottish coast. I'm not entirely sure where it was fictionally meant to be, but it feels like that. And the um, the accents of the audiobook have Scottish accents. So kind of a, a Scottish, Scandinavian feel to the island. She goes to the island to help with this theatre, to help save the theatre and she's coming up with lots of ideas. She's very bright and breezy. And somebody who works there is a guy called Matt, who has a young daughter. He's a single parent. His wife, ex-wife left him. And so he's grieving that. He's grieving the loss of some other people in his life. And he is quite sort of grumpy. So it's a definitely sunshine grumpy kind of trope, but this one was done very well. It kind of subverts it a bit in places as well. Um, yeah, absolutely loved it. Give it. It gives me sort of Beauty and the Beast feels at the beginning, particularly. And yeah, I loved it all the way through. I liked listening to the audio books. It was quite funny. I never imagined the American accents being those ones. So when I read the first book, I just I read the paper copy. Uh, so hearing it was quite strange to start with, but yeah, it was really fun. And yeah, swoonworthy romance, very sweet, pretty clean and yeah just really sort of kissing that's all there is in that one i like the style of it i liked that it was sort of backwards and forwards in messaging mostly there is a bit of narrative but mostly it's like emails texts that kind of thing and i like that you they had both a male and a female narrator on the audio book as far as christian content goes it's kind of light but they are definitely uh definitely both Christian characters. I felt like, to me, it felt like Penelope was maybe younger in her faith and so just sort of learning, um, yeah, sort of at the beginning of her journey maybe. They went to church and that kind of thing, um, but it wasn't there right at the centre of like the decision making and stuff. So I would give it a two out of three for Christian faith rating and 9 out of 10 for story enjoyment rating. I enjoyed it very much. I finished reading The Huntress of Thornbeck Forest by Melanie Dickerson. This is a medieval fairy tale retelling, but it's sort of a mashup of two. So uh, somebody in the comments said to me it's like Robin Hood and the Swan Princess, which is true. After having read it, it was definitely sort of a mashup of those two things together. Odette is a, a merchant's, not daughter, niece, and she's living with her uncle, um, fairly wealthy, and she likes to secretly go out into the forest and shoot deer to give to the poor children to make sure that they are fed, and she goes that out at night time to do that. She's also sort of teaching the young orphans. She wants to help them. But then she meets a the Margrave, sort of the head guy, the like Duke, as it were, over the place. Um, his forester, who is in charge of the forest, and he is trying to track down a poacher who's been poaching deer. But they are sort of instantly... Uh, 
they're attracted to each other but she knows as soon as she finds out who he is that that is really bad news for her uh, but she can't help being attracted to him and he's attracted to her um, so there's the romance there's the story of the what will happen if um, he finds out there's uh, some other subplots going on as well within that story the actual like the action part of the story I really enjoyed I thought it was um good I thought it had a good story all the way through and especially near the end got very um yeah built up the plot uh, as quite often for me with Melanie Dickinson's books I really enjoyed the action some of the romance I find quite cheesy um same in this book some of the sort of interactions between the characters when it comes to romance I found a bit stilted a bit formal um unusually so for people of their kind of class and it just made it feel unnatural more like actors acting it out on a stage rather than actual people when it and it's only when it comes to that sort of conversations that they're having just something about it sort of grates on me but the rest of the the sort of storyline of the book um I enjoyed a lot so I would give this one 3 out of 3 for Christian Faith Rating and 7.5 out of 10 for Story Enjoyment Rating. I finished reading Just for the Summer by Melody Carlson. I like to uh, match my top to the uh, book when I'm doing these things. <laughs> yeah, accidental. This is a sort of Christian, sort of clean, um, contemporary romance. It is like a kind of job swap um, tropes so there's, there are two hotel managers female hotel managers who are um sort of fed up with where they are one of them Ginny is in a popular boutique hotel in Seattle and then Jacqueline is managing her grandfather's fishing lodge and they go on this job swap site and end up swapping hotels and of course there is romance involved in the uh, story I thought I could predict where this story was kind of going. I was kind of hoping for that, um, but it went in its own sort of direction. And to start with, I was maybe a little bit confused, maybe a bit disappointed, but actually, as I got into it, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was quite refreshing. There is a character in here which I, who I didn't like at all. I uh, didn't, really didn't like, and I'm not gonna say who it is because that would kind of, spoil it but as I was uh, reading through I felt like the author intended me to not like this person so yeah at least I think so. so I kind of relaxed into it of just sort of it's okay that I don't like them very much thankfully most of the focus was on like characters that I did enjoy I liked the the romance of one of the couples um better than the other it was a cute romance it wasn't cheesy it didn't go where I expected it to go. It could have ended more quickly, like more compact ending, I think, for me. In terms of faith content, I would say most of the book reads like a clean read, but there was one sort of bit where the faith really came to the fore and was there in the foreground, but for the most part, it's very much in the background. I believe one of her other books, The Happy Camper, has been made into like a TV movie and I could see this one being a similar sort of thing. It has that kind of feel to it and yeah, a lot of the way through I, I really enjoyed it. Just that bit at the end was just too long for me, I think. Overall, on reflection, I would give this one an 8 out of 10 for story enjoyment and 1.5 out of 3 for Christian faith rating. I finished reading To Spark a Match by Jen Tirano. This is the second book in her Matchmakers series. It's set in the Hudson River Valley in 1888. So that's the kind of setting for it. Um, it's following one of the characters that popped up in the first book, Adelaide, who is a... Uh, she's been on the, the marriage market, as it were. She's been out in the season for a little while. She is got a reputation for being a bit odd because she isn't like other girls and she also gets herself into difficult situations, complicated situations. 
She's a bit clumsy and she has a lot of cats which she really loves and also loves reading and other things like climbing trees and just different things that aren't particularly supposed to be ladylike. At the beginning of the book she's at a party and she has just showed off her, uh, as they call it, her unmentionables to everybody there after coming back from the bathroom. It was an unfortunate incident and embarrassing. She goes to hide in the library and there there is a man there hiding behind the curtains. She finds out that he's somebody she actually knows called Gideon who um, has helped her out before and not a burglar but he is someone who works for uh, an accountancy firm in, uh, that's what it's called, uh, but it's actually a investigating firm. So he w investigates, private investigator kind of person. Um, and he's there on a job and he, for reasons I won't go into, needs her help. or well, she decides he needs her help in causing a distraction um, in order to, sort out the mess that he's in. So she then causes a distraction, it causes such a big distraction, it all goes even horribly wrong, that society is on the verge of cutting her out of society. Um, he feels guilty about that and so he wants to help her get back into society and so the book is really about um, him doing his job as an investigator, him trying to help her to get back into society and be accepted again. It is a historical romance. It is also a, sort of a suspense in some ways. It's also got comedy in it. Um, it's quite light-hearted in terms of the suspense, but there is more drama in this book than in the first book. This one had, the first book had, mo it was majority romance with a bit of suspense thrown into it. Um, this book is more sort of half and half romance and suspense although it's as I say it's very light-hearted in comedy there's a lot of physical comedy in in there so it's not a dark book. Again I really enjoyed it I loved all the cats that she has uh, I'm, I'm a cat person. Uh, I enjoyed her awkwardness and how she felt different from other people around her that makes her quite sparky as a character and there's also of course the spark of romance between the two characters because this is a romance. Gideon is also quite an interesting character and not what you'd totally expect when you first get to meet him. So I enjoyed the comedy, I enjoyed the the action side of it and I enjoyed the romance. Uh, so I would give this 9 out of 10 for story enjoyment rating. In terms of Christian faith there was um, one of one or two sort of moments where it came out um, to the forefront but the majority of the book reads more like a clean historical fiction so I would give it 1.5 out of 3 for Christian Faith rating. Those are the books that I've read recently let me know as I say in the comments if you've read any of them or if you've read a good book recently I'd love to chat books with you in the comments. I hope you're having a great reading week. If you'd like to see more videos about Christian fiction, you can watch these videos over here. And till next time, I pray God bless you and your families. Bye.